All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Massacres. Credit to Simon Hossman for inventing it. But first, would you like to make your Master Duel experience a whole lot better? Are you ready to take your Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Play experience to a new level? The Untapped GG Companion is here for you. Use the Deck Tracker to know exactly what cards you have in your deck, and to go over any cards you aren't familiar with yet by hovering over them. It instantly updates when you draw a card, and automatically hides if you check your extra deck or graveyard. This is the perfect tool to help you master a new deck. The Untapped GG Companion also lets you import decks directly into the game in seconds. Copy any YDK or YDKE deck string, create a new deck in game, click the Start Auto Import button, and let us take the wheel. Once the duel is over, check your win rate on your personal stats page. Brag among your friends and share your decks so they can import them into the game too. Start your path to master today by downloading the Untapped GG Companion at ygom.untapped.gg. All right, guys, we just won the coin flip. We're going first. Uh, we have a fully blue field here. Our hand is uh, kind of okay. Uh, definitely we can activate this and hopefully not get maxi because if we get maxi, we just lose. But we've got a fully blue field. Honestly, I'm looking at everything. We probably just... What could we really do? We can go with the Time Thief, and that's pretty much it. We can go with the Time Thief and then see what our opponent's playing. So I think we just summon out the Familiar Possessed, and then we go into Time Thief. I think our opponent probably has a a Hand Trap of some kind. Hopefully it's Effect Veiler. So they can't use it on... No. They can't use it on our t on their on their turn. It's not. Hopefully, it's not imperm. Then we're gonna drop the time thief, and then we're gonna drop these two face down, and just pass on this. And hopefully, this is good enough. This hand was a little bit rough. Not really enough interruptions on that one. It's labyrinth, and I know there are gonna be people that are like, "Don't quit, never give up." It's labyrinth, and it's labyrinth with transaction rollback. So, I, you can imagine how annoying this is going to be. And what did they set? The big welcome. I mean, the chances of us beating this is like near zero. I'm going to stay for a little bit, but I mean, let's be honest. If they had one, you got to be kidding me. I get a monster off the top against Labyrinth. I couldn't get a trap. Yeah, this is, this is, I don't think this is going to work. Uh, this one is not, we're not beating Labyrinth. And it doesn't really matter what we have or they have or anything. We're probably not beating Labyrinth, but I'll stick around for a little bit for the people who get dramatic every single time. All right, he's going to activate from hand. I literally have no interruptions either. I have the Sakuratsu armor if he attacks, but unfortunately we did not get anything good off the Time Thief. And now he's going to go Big Welcome. Big Welcome's obviously very good because it can special and then bounce. And then this can set another card like... This, this, is, this is impossible. I, I literally, I cannot win this. Not with this hand. I don't think there's a hand that I have in my deck that can beat Labyrinth. That's how, that's how un, like, the thing about control decks, control decks are like cannibals. The, it, the best control deck will always simply win. Uh, it's, it's why this is the only control deck that's pretty much played. Like, it's, over, we, our, the, our duel is going to last multiple turns, and we're not going to be, we're going to stall them, but they're just going to be able to do more in the time that we stall. All right, we just won the coin flipper again. Our hand's looking actually pretty solid here. We've got Barrier Statue, Solemn Judgment. Again, with this Paleozoic. This isn't a bad card, but we seem to be drawing it in situations where I'd rather not draw it. But at least we got Barrier Statue, which is good. So we have Judgment and Barrier Statue. The first time drawing Judgment, it's like a first appearance, which is kind of cool. Uh, we're going to see where this goes. I mean, hopefully it goes seemingly well. He's got multiple blue eyes things here. We've just got the blue eyes up here. He's got the blue eyes, the blue eyes, the blue eyes. Surrounded by blue eyes, so hopefully he's playing blue eyes because barrier statue puts in a lot of work against blue eyes. Uh, I guess we'll have to see. Setting a card, that's good. But a lot of noobs will set then play, so we'll see. He's setting mold, a, an uncomfortable amount of cards now. At first, when he was setting one, we were we were doing okay. But now that he set three, suddenly it's a lot more scary. And he's going to go directly to end phase, which is fine with me. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, start getting into into some moves i think we summoned purple poison purple poison's decent just in case uh, just in case we need to pop something if this gets popped for whatever we could like pop a monster later or a face-up card so this card's not bad sometimes so it's good to sometimes go into it but again we don't know what he's playing yet so i guess we'll have to see now we go to battle phase and, and try to attack so we'll swing for as much as we can He's going to activate Raigeki Break. Discarding Blue Eyes. Targeting Purple Poison. Which, honestly... 
I'm kind of fine with. <laughs> I'm kind of fine with. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to pop with purple poison. But I like I like the I like where we're at. I like I like the fact that we've got Raigeki Break. I like the barrier statue survives. I like a lot of things that are going on. Uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to. Uh, we're not going to use the effect of purple poison because the only thing we can pop is barrier statue. Cause it's the only face-up card on the field, but. So whatever. I was hoping he would flip something, you know, next turn or whatever. But this attack at least will go through, and then we'll just pass on this. And we'll go to end phase. That should be uh, that should be good enough here. So we did a thousand damage. We only have to do that seven more times, and we win the duel. Yeah, this is weird. He's like he's playing like control blue eyes. He's got Raigeki Break. There are so many better cards than Raigeki Break. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. I would probably play Raigeki Break, but I'm. I'm I'm locked to a certain I'm I'm locked to a, the roll of the dice in terms of how I acquire my cards. If I could choose which cards to play, I definitely wouldn't be playing this. I'd be playing Dogmatic of Punishment. Uh, he's going to activate this is fine because it literally does nothing of importance right now. So I don't care if he does that. He can set a spawn trap card. Honestly, I'm not going to judgment that because he can't summon blue eyes. None of the blue eyes spawn trap cards really matter because unless you have a blue eyes, they don't really do anything. So, Blue Eyes Fusion doesn't do anything. Uh, this doesn't do anything. Uh, Vision with Eyes of Blue, this does nothing. Because he doesn't control a Blue Eyes, he doesn't control a non-Blue Eyes. Like, he doesn't have any of the appropriate cards to make this a usable card anyway. So, that literally does nothing right now. It's going to go to end phase, yeah. And uh, that's good enough. So, let's go try to go for another battle here. We have Small World. We can Small World into another Barrier Statue, actually. Or Small World into something else. Yeah, I'm going to activate Small World. I'm going to try to get to another Barrier Statue because I think Barrier Statue is just really good. So if I got two of them, two of them plus a Solemn Judgment plus a Paleozoic, I think would be actually quite decent. They were doing 2,000 every turn instead of 1,000. I think that would be quite nice. So he's going to let that resolve. We're going to pick Arborea because she's not really doing anything for us. And we're going to pick a Warrior like Goblinburg. Probably Goblinburg. Or actually Photon Thrasher is probably better to get rid of. Because he's a warrior level 4, and we're searching. And make sure, yeah, 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 that's, just level 4 is the only thing it has in common. So we'll pick that, and then we'll get to another barrier statue. And technically we can get to an RE Fire, we can get to this Witch of the Black Forest to help us search later on for another barrier statue. But, yeah, I don't think I have a way to, like, tribute it or anything. Just in case he pops it, I guess we can go to get to another barrier statue. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and just go with the, the second barrier statue because I think it'd just be better. He's still got something that he can activate face down, but I don't really care all that much. So we'll summon that out. And we'll go to battle phase. 2,000 damage now every single turn, so that's not too bad. He's going to activate this. All he can do is set a spawn trap card. Again, I'm not really too afraid of that. Uh, none of the blue eye spawn trap cards are scary in any way. Chaos Form does nothing against this. He's just clogging his own back row, making this more likely for us to win. So we're going to attack again. We're going to attack again. So we're going to do some easy damage there. The only normal summon that Blue Eyes has that's, I guess, is decently strong would be the Lord of D, which is 1,200. So that can get over the Barrier Statue, but we do have the Paleozoic Hallucination thing. And then we've got Solemn Judgment to protect any any random, like, okay, here's Raigeki. Like, anything like that, we have the protection for it. He's going to activate again to set directly. Now, he's actually, he does I don't know if he realizes, but he's clogging his back row, making the situation actually worse for himself. Because if he does draw the out, he can't use the out. So, I mean, that's another problem. So, he's going to set Destined Rivals. This card is actually really good. If he got a Blue Eyes on the field, this would be really good. This negates all of our, all of our uh, face-up monsters. If he was able to get a blue eyes onto the field, but you know, barrier statue. So it's actually the right card technically. So now he's got all his back row clogged. It's beautiful. And we're going to keep fighting it out. We're going to draw familiar possessed. I wish this was an Ari fire because we would be able to special summon, but it's not. So we're going to go into familiar possessed, go to battle phase. I, this is probably, I'm going to risk it. I think it's a stone which is either 200 defense or 500 defense so i'm going to attack with a barrier statue 500 defense exactly the other stone is 200 this stone is is uh 500 so now we get to attack some more 
and attack again. And he's down to 2150, and we're almost done here. This is good. We have some, like I said, we have solemn judgment for anything foolish. And if we, if he does, you know, if he does have anything really good, he can't even activate it really because he'd have to activate whatever this is. And hopefully it's an activatable card because technically he can't activate this. He can't activate this. I don't know if this is activatable. He's going to add, activate this to add back alternative. That doesn't really do anything. That's fine. I don't even care. And I said, if you draw something really good, we have solemn judgment. So it's perfect. He's going to summon the Lord of D on shocking. Exactly what I said he was going to do. And we have the Paleozoic um, hallucination thing. And he can make the attack half. So you can target this, return that to the hand, and then special summon a blue eyes. I don't think he realizes that he's going to be able to return this, but he's not going to be able to summon blue eyes. Because there's a barrier statue because there's no fire blue eyes. So the monster that he wants to summon, he actually can't summon. So all he did was just out his own monster for us. Uh, and now he's going to scoop. Uh, because the return, it's not that it's cost, but it's a part of the effect, and it's an if you do effect, so he just he just outed his own monster for no reason. Alright, so we've got two legacy tickets, fair enough. Out of curiosity, this is what our opponent was playing. He's playing basically the starter deck. The starter deck blue eyes. Um, there's so much to fix, I don't even know where to get started. Alright, let's open a master pack. Definitely excited for this. It's uh, non-glow. But whatever, we need something really, really, really cool, very different, something new to play, not gonna work. Uh, okay, that is, like, actually something. That opens up so many possibilities, I gotta look at our fusion monsters, wow. We have Thunder Dragon, which, Thunder Dragon Colossus, which could be made with a polymerization, that's just such a, like, on the low kind of a crazy pull. Small Universe, I don't think this is really usable, it's something like Pendulums. Yeah, this is very usable for us. Uh, Ojama Pink is a decent card, actually. If it's sent from the Monster Zone, each player draws a card and uh, discards a card. So it's like uh, Dark World Dealings uh, on a monster, which is kind of cool. Eternal Chaos is actually good for our Chaos deck. That's kind of interesting. Okay, I can't believe we pulled that. Uh, Megalith, not, it's a Megalith card. Snowplow, Hustle, Rustle. <laughs> uh, this card is uh, not super crazy but i mean it's a card and then we've got the Oshleon, which do we have this card yeah we already have this card so it's not super usable for us but this eternal chaos is interesting and polymerization is definitely interesting all right let's open these legacy tickets hopefully there's something cool hiding in these all right we've got second booster we already have that psychic tra trigger i don't think this is too usable no it's okay remove from play draw two cards i mean it's not bad. I mean, we have to be in a position where we're already kind of losing, and then it becomes decent. But it's not—it's not the worst draw card ever. We've—we've we've seen worse. Uh, thing in the crater is not. It's pushed someone pyro monster from your hand. It's not bad. You get some of the barrier statue. Uh, but if the, when this card's destroyed, it's when destroyed, sent to the graveyard. You can it misses timing on a lot of things, and then variety comes out is quite a quite a card. All right, not really for us. Alright, so I never thought I'd actually pull Polymerization because somebody was like, you know, you should be able to just use Polymerization. I was like, you know, it's not a bad idea. I didn't think I'd actually pull it, so now let's check out our Fusion Monsters. I think there's stuff that we could legitimately use, but they're very odd combinations. Where am I looking? Where is the where's the Fusion stuff? Yeah, there it is. Um, yeah, this stuff that we could definitely use. Now all of these open up all of a sudden, which is kind of crazy. So we've got, I forgot, we had Dark Magician, but we don't have Dark Magician anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, this is a contact fusion, so that doesn't matter anyway. Barox, I would use if I had instant fusion. So far, none of these are really even usable. I guess this could be used. Two DDD monsters. It's not a bad card. It's like a huge monster, pretty easy to summon. Like, two DDD monsters. We have this, any two DDD monsters. So there's a lot of stuff that we could possibly use, actually. I have the Thunder Dragon Colossus is Thunder Dragon plus any Thunder Monster. We have Thunder Dragon, like regular old classic Thunder Dragon. We legitimately have that card. So that's a possibility. That's definitely something. I don't know if it's worth playing right now. The Springins, we don't have Fallen of Alabaz. Actually, we have the monster that counts as Fallen of Alabaz on the field. So maybe that's worth playing. But like, again, it, it's tough to build a deck around a card when we only have one of it, you know? We have one polymerization. I don't really want to build a whole deck around polymerization and like two random types. Now, Odd Eyes 
Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon. This is legitimately a summonable card. Now, the problem with this is it's a any Pendulum monster, any Odd Eyes monster. We don't have a lot of Odd Eyes cards at all. They're actually kind of high rarity and kind of hard to pull. So that wouldn't be that. This would actually be worth summoning. This is a decent card, especially in our Pendulum deck. Uh, some of the other cards we've pulled too that have been quite decent. So you know, this is something to keep on keep going in the background this is another cybers and a link monster pretty easy to summon right i mean any cybers any link monster definitely summonable there has to be something really good now this is really good like legitimately this is actually a really really good card uh, i would rather just do it in a more intelligent way than that and as far as our other pulls have been a little not great all right so we just won that coin flip uh our hand is looking kind of decent actually we have this, the special summon, and then we have tin goldfish, so we can go into... Honestly, I actually think that the frame, the Zeta, would actually be better, if I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I think Zeta legitimately is better than going into Time Thief. Time Thief doesn't really do much in this situation. I think Zeta is actually... Legitimately, I think it's actually better. And if we draw a tin goldfish, we draw any level 4 monster, we have a decent follow-up. So I actually do think this is better right now. So I'm going to go ahead and go with this. So we go Zeta, summon in the middle column, and then we just set Crackdown and Memory Loss. We have three interruptions. Not not the best, but for our deck, it's not bad. Uh, and then, like I said, if we draw level four monster, we have 10 Goldfish to follow up with. It's better than following up with a Crusadia, because Crusadia follow-up does pretty much nothing. So not the worst follow-up. They're going to go, they're playing Agents. I already see that. Which is a pretty decent deck. They have Master Hyperion, the new Master Hyperion. They have some really good cards. We do have some interruptions. So I guess we can we'll be able to do some stuff, okay? They're gonna add Earth. Earth is their main searcher, sanctuary in the sky. Once this is on the field, everything gets their secondary effects, which is tough. Tough to deal with. Earth. We can negate Earth. You can add an agent monster. And then Sanctuary in the Sky, you can add a Master Hyperion. I think that it wouldn't be too dumb to negate this card because it is their starter. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and memory loss this. Put that into defense. They do have a Link Monster, which is quite good. But unfortunately, we can't negate Link Monsters with memory loss anyway. But memory loss is pretty good. It, it negates. It, it, it's switches to defense so they can't attack so there's definitely some cool effects to it and then if i'm going to steal anything i'm going to steal with crackdown i'm going to steal if he gets to a master hyperion or something uh master hyperion it's not it's not edison so it's not like master hyperion has like priority or anything uh so it'd, it'd be quite decent to just see that that's pretty good and the problem is the trap cards that they have are really decent like so we'll have to see. See, this has been really actually good decision making because we have tin goldfish and we can special summon Witch of the Black Forest. Uh, so we're now we're going to normal summon this. We're going to special summon Witch of the Black Forest. And then we can go into a rank four or a link two. Which both are decent. Black Witch of the Black Forest will allow us to search. Or Time Thief will allow us to create an endless game state of suffering for our opponent. They're going to Herald of the Orange Light, the Tin Goldfish. I will not lie to you. I did not see that coming. And he's just kind of hemorrhaging resources here. So he's going to give up two cards to destroy Tin Goldfish. And I think we're just going to go battle and get rid of the Earth. Yeah, Earth is gone. It sucks that we didn't get the Witch of the Black Forest into play. But, I mean, what can I do? I mean, it happens. It, it, it's still, you know, we still have to watch out. It is a constructed deck. He's got Sanctuary in the Sky, so all those effects do double what they should do, which go to end phase here. We never got Witch of the Black Forest into circulation. I would have linked it away and probably searched into Tiamaton, and that would have been pretty good, but this is the best that I've got so far. All right, he's going to activate this agent from the hand. It was that Neptune he activated. One of the Neptune, yeah. This is the new one, the Agent of Life Neptune. He's going to summon out this. This activates on normal summon, so it's fine, I guess. Doesn't activate on. Okay, so now he's got this in hand. So this is the way I see it. I think his hand is absolutely. Well, his, I know his hand's trash, and if I take his monster, then he won't be able to combo off anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and activate the crackdown. And I'm going to target, it doesn't matter who I target, but I'm going to target this, the Earth. 
The reason I'm doing this is because the Link 2 for them is pretty good, and also he can go into the Sprite Elf, because these are both level 2s, but he only needed one level 2. He can go into Sprite Elf, and then Link Climb. So I don't want him to be able to do that, so I'll just take this onto my side of the field, and now these two are, are trapped in time here. We're going to Small World, that's not bad, but I think Switch of the Black Forest is good enough as is. So I'm going to Normal Summon Witch of the Black Forest, and I think I'm just going to link this Witch of the Black Forest away along with this Earth. So I'm going to link off into... This is a pretty big monster, the Code Breaker, so I'm going to link off into these two. And I'm going to Special Summon. Honestly, I could Special Summon here, and then Tiamaton is live. But it's not like I would, you know, summon it in this column anyway. So we're we'll summoning it here. Which of the Black Forest goes off. We get the search for free. And we're going to search out... Did we normal summon? Yeah, we normal summon. Obviously, we normal summoned. I think we search out... Barrier Statue wouldn't be too bad either, because then we just win next turn. But Tiamaton's also not too bad. Yeah, Tiamaton's... This, they, the Wish of the Black Forest literally searches our entire deck. But Tiamaton's not bad, but we don't really have the setup for it. So I think I'll just go with Barrier Statue. If I need to, I'll Small World out of it next turn anyway. So now I think we just go to Battle Face. And we just attack. And what's crazy is I could have... No matter what I searched, I could have just Small World it into anything else anyway. And we just attack here and attack again. And they're not taking any damage. So that was actually dumb on my part. They're not taking any damage from battle uh, with with fairy monsters as long as he's got the sanctuary and the sky on the field. So then we just pass on this and next turn, if we survive, we normal summon the barrier statue if we survive. And then that should seal the deal theoretically. And our opponent scoops it up. Perfect. Okay, that's that was a clean win. That was a clean win. Those are really good interruptions. We, we did what we had to. All right, so let's see our rewards. Two and then uh, the robot, patrol robot. Not a good card. Old tournament pack card. And then we've got two legacy tickets. I like that our deck actually legitimately beats decks sometimes. Like, it's not like, oh, my opponent bricked. It's like, no, like, sometimes they, we actually beat legitimate decks, which is cool. Uh, Black Luster Soldier, I think this is usable. Banishing all lights and darks, and you have to have equal number of each. You could possibly use this in our Chaos deck, but it's definitely not a bad card. It just requires an equal amount, which can be weird sometimes. Uh, so it's definitely not a bad card. Miracle Fusion, we already have, and we're not using it now. We don't have enough heroes. This is pretty good. We have the water version of the Cataclysm. Uh, this card's not bad, but we'd have to have like a full water deck, which wouldn't be too bad. The Earth one is actually probably the best. Melfi Puppy... Not really usable. Uh, this is the Guard Dragon and Drake. So this card's actually pretty good, but it's very clearly supposed to be used with like Pisty and LP, and we don't really have that stuff. But it's not actually a bad card, this Guard Dragon. Uh, all these pulls have been not too bad. Like this isn't bad, this isn't bad, this isn't bad. Not too bad, but you know, not too great either. All right, so this card's not bad either. It lets you add any level four Earth monster when it's summoned. They're all not bad so far. Another Jurak card. We seem to keep getting Jurak cards, like, non-stop. Yeah, when a defense position Jurak, mo Jurak monster is destroyed, you can special summon this. I don't know how usable that really is. And then we got Comic Hand, which lets you steal a monster if you have Toon World. So, this isn't bad, this isn't bad, this isn't bad, this isn't bad. We have cards that aren't bad, but, like, not immediately usable, but definitely not bad. Alright, so we just opened two Legacy tickets. One's glowing with UR, but honestly, the URs... I've looked at them before. Number one, they kind of suck. Number two, we, we're just so unlucky with the URs in here. We got better supers than URs. Battle Mania, I think we already have... Do we have this? No, we don't have this. Um, yeah, we don't have this card. All right, so this forces our opponent to attack. They're going to attack us anyway. Uh, let's see what this is. Morphing Jar. Wow, that's actually like... Kind of good. <laughs> now, that's slow, but that's really actually like... It's one of the best flip effect monsters of all time. This is probably like the uh, Michael Jordan of flip effect monsters. It really is. This is a really good flip effect monster. Uh, now, you can't, we're not going to be able to deck our opponent out or anything crazy like that. I'm trying to think, do we play this in the control deck? It's one of those cards I would definitely want to play. It's a very interesting card. It's always been one of my favorite arcs. It's such a creepy, weird looking card. Uh, definitely a really, really outrageous pull. I can't believe we just pulled that. That is uh, that is a wild pull. Then we've got Tadpole, not really usable, and Raid Raptor's Pain. Raid Raptor Pain, Alanius. Uh, this card's not 
really too usable. We don't have a Raid Raptor monster that we can really like super combo off with this, but that is definitely an interesting pull for sure. I think we have to update some decks. All right, we're here in the Chaos deck. I think we have to definitely update some stuff. We've got Morphing Jar, which is like as chaos as it gets. We've got the Black Luster Soldier, which you need equal parts light and dark, but still pretty usable. And then we've got some other stuff that is usable. We pulled this card, the Chaos Eternal, which was a pretty important card. Pretty important card in that deck, so that's pretty interesting. We've also got this, too, the Manadium, but we have nothing to really go into, but that's not a bad card either. So we have a lot of stuff that's like, this Chaos deck has definitely been building and building and building and building and building. Because uh, there's a lot of good cards in the Chaos deck. Uh, we just have to kind of put it together. We have like Branded, Regained, we pulled... We have another Royal Rare, we have the Peaceful Planet, Calarium, we have this thing. Like, it's kind of outrageous how many, like, different good cards that we have uh, for for this Chaos deck. We just have to kind of sit down, really look at the build, and build it in the best way possible. But I think a lot of the stuff that we've got since... A lot of stuff that we've got is quite good, like Ringworm, which is actually a pretty good, easy tuner to use, but we don't have any normal monsters. It's still pretty good because it's a light... We've got a lot of good stuff. We really have to sit down and look at this deck because there's a lot of cool stuff, especially and a lot of the Cosmo stuff too is really awesome. So we have to sit down and look at this deck again and rebuild it in an efficient manner. All right, we just lost that coin flip. I was looking at this guy's thing. I've never seen this icon. What is this dual icon right here? Is that like a ray? Is that like a custom icon? I've never seen this icon. It's like a zoomed in picture of ray. Or is that Ecclesia? I don't even know. This guy's playing... Kashtira, like legitimate Kashtira. I don't know if we're going to be able to beat this, but I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll try. We'll see how it goes. I don't think we're going to be able to beat this. This isn't looking too good. Oh, and he's playing Tier Elements with the Kashtira. It's pretty good. He opened the Fenrir and, and he opened the. This guy's like an anime, like, I guess not an anime duelist. He's like a. What would you call this? He loves the storylines, but this guy got really, really good pull. I mean, like, really, 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 really good hand. Uh, I guess he's using both, and they're both working out, so we'll see how far he gets here, but this might be, this might be a scoop, this might be a scoop. Now, the fortunate thing, again, a lot of you guys panic when I scoop, we're in gold. There is no penalty to scooping whatsoever. That's, there's no penalty. You don't go down in gold. You just, you just, I understand if I'm in, like, Platinum 3, and this is the deciding game between getting to Platinum 2 and not, but I'm in gold. I'm not going down no matter what I do. All right, so he's going to keep going off here. Kid Kalos. Yeah, he's going off. This is uh, Kid Kalos. Should, a lot of people argue should be banned. Kid Kalos, he's going to mill eight. Which is just fun. He's got Mudora. He's got everything. He's got multiple super polys. Yeah, this isn't looking too good. I'm not going to lie. This is looking pretty, pretty crap for us. But, I mean, I guess we'll stick it out a little while longer. Ru Kalos is pretty good. It negates an effect that special summons, so non-inherent special summons it negates and then he's going to activate this banish a spawn trap card that lists visa star frost i'm going to see how far he gets but i think this is pretty much wrapped up this is really like a really really good hand for him um it's definitely an interesting build too because he's got some cash tiers but pretty much just to search fenrir and add Havness. so if we activate a monster effect he gets to trigger the stuff back on our turn i don't believe that we can possibly win this one but We'll, we'll, I guess we'll check it out. Penguin Squire. If I activate it. Actually, you know, Peng Havness is only monster effects on the field. But Rue Kalos can stop Penguin Squire. So let's try. Alright, let's set a monster. And then we're going to activate Penguin Squire. And I guess we have the out for the Rue Kalos. Because we have Forbidden Chalice. So... We have this anyway, so we're going to go ahead and uh, set this. Actually, now that I realized, I'm going to activate yes to change. I just realized if I activate this to flip this monster, he can activate Havness. Uh, he's going to activate Fenrir. I might as well activate the Chalice. Negate Fenrir. Why not? Give our opponent a little bit of trouble here. He's going to activate the Tier Limit card. To destroy a card on the field, which is going to be our Penguin Squire. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Let's 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 be honest with ourselves. We're not we're not winning this. We're not winning this duel. 
Uh, this is tier limits got hit on the ban list, but the, the hand he had, it might as well not have been hit on the ban list. He had, it was like full power. All right, we just won the coin flip, and our hand is looking pretty solid. All right, let's see. We have Dimension Fissure, and we have Dimension Fissure plus probably a Time Thief. I'm trying to think, is there anything else worth summoning? Usually not. So it's probably going to be Dimension Fissure, Time Thief. I'm going to save Witch of the Black Forest for later. And I'll just sit on what I have here. I don't think there's... Yeah, literally, it's... I can go Dimensional Fissure, Time Thief, next turn we go get rid of Witch of the Black Forest, go into something else. That's that's probably our best bet here. So now we go, and I should have actually, all right, I should have activated Dimensional Fissure first, because then I could have played around Maxi and Effect Veiler and stuff, but I mean, it's not like I needed to play Effect Veiler, whatever. It, it's, I, could, I should have activated Dimensional Fissure. I keep forgetting that it, it completely just... It destroys Maxi, which is quite nice. So we're going to activate Dimensional Fissure. And if he is, he has a bunch of Blue Eyes stuff. If he actually is playing Blue Eyes, this is like a very good card against them. So we'll see what they have, but this is this is what we have so far. Not, not the worst, not the best. We're going to activate Time Thief, get some information. Hopefully it's not a monster. Usually it's a monster, but hopefully it's a Spell or Trap card. That way we can draw. He's going to chain Springins. You can activate this card, detach three materials from monsters you control, add a Springins monster. Uh, okay, so that basically lets him add a Springins card. That's fine. And he's going to add a Springins monster, which is actually better, because it's a lower chance of us getting a monster off the top of his deck. So, And we still get a monster off the top of his deck. He's playing Infinitrack. Probably Earth Machines is what he's playing. And Samurai. Okay, so I just realized he's probably not playing any spawn trap cards in his deck anyway. So I guess every monster that leaves the field will... Every card that leaves the field will be banished. The only thing that sucks is that Time Thief pretty much does nothing <laughs> against uh, against this deck. Now, it is kind of cool that we took his Tunneler, because Tunneler is the card that lets him uh, shuffle back. Yeah, Tunneler lets you shuffle back and then... And draw two cards, but because we have D dimensional fissure, he's not going to be able to do it. The other good thing is that he, the piercer, I believe it's called piercer. Yeah, there it is. Uh, when piercer is not going to go to graveyard, and since it's not going to go to graveyard, he's not going to be able to search off the piercer. So that's good too. There's a few things that are going well for us. Now, obviously, Time Thief Redoer against super heavy samurais is like... I don't even know how to even compare it. That's like, it's like Macro Cosmos against Grand Manju. It just does, it does nothing. Uh, because it, it won't, when it hits the graveyard, it just won't search. He's going to go into Baron. He's going to lose the monsters that he had, but, you know, Baron's Baron. So he's going to be able to pop our Dimensional Fissure. Uh, he's going to target D Fissure. Understandable, nothing I can do about that. He got the perfect amount of levels to get the D, to Baron to Fleur. Again, there's nothing I can do here. He's going to summon out the Super Heavy Samurai. And hopefully I can do something about it. Our, our hand was, like I said, it looked good at first, but it was a little awkward because we had a bunch of monsters and no spawn trap cards. Well, one spawn trap card. If we had other spawn trap cards, probably could have gone a better direction. But we'll see if our opponent has more follow-up. He's going to search this dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we had other traps, like you can see what percentage of our deck is purple and blue here. We actually don't play that many spell cards, I just realized. We play, how many spell cards do we play? One, two, three, four, five, six. We only play six spell cards, which is kind of crazy considering how many good spell cards there are in, in, in Yu-Gi-Oh. We're going to activate Time Thief to obviously save it. Uh, if he negates it, he negates. He has to waste the negate. I'm, I'm cool with that. Let him waste the negate. And uh, we'll, we'll live with it. We'll definitely live with it. And that will take more damage, but he wasted a negate, so I guess that's fine. We could have taken 600 damage instead of 3,000, but it's, it's cool because we saved ourselves uh, negate. So if we do have an out, we just get to out things. All right, we're going to draw a Goblinburg. Goblinburg is pretty good here. We Can we get to Avermax? I'm trying to think. Can we get to Avermax? We cannot get to Avermax. We unfortunately can only get to... Link 3. We cannot get to Avermax. We're close, though. Pretty close. He has no fire monsters in Graveyard. If we did, we would be able to do something, but we does not. 
Yeah, we can get close, but not to Avermax. What does this card do? Alright, well, he takes no battle damage from this thing. If he did take battle damage, we'd be able to sue ship out him. But he doesn't take battle damage, so I'm trying to brainstorm here what the smartest thing is to do. It's not looking good. Yeah, unfortunately, the furthest I can get is to a Link 3. We, like I've said before, our Link 3s are lackluster. I don't think there's really much that I can do here. Alright, so this is the best I've got. I'm gonna Goblinburg. I'm gonna activate the effect of Goblinburg. And I'm going to special summon Witch of the Black Forest. If he lets me, I don't know what he's got in hand. Effect Veiler. So all, all of that thinking was for nothing. He, he's he got this one. He, he uh, There's nothing I can do. Once that got stopped, it was over. There's nothing I can do. He's got Baron and it can like recycle and stuff. Alright, we just won the coin flip. Our hand is okay. Uh, we've got Purple Poison Crackdown, Messenger, and Paleozoic. Like I've said before, when we get the, the battle traps... I mean, we get a lot of these battle cards, but not any of the... We get battle cards, but we don't get any interruptions. It can be a little bit rough, but it's it's okay because we've got a few interruptions. We have Purple Poison, which can destroy a card. The This cuts attack. If we don't get ba Barrier Statue... Oh my god. This is a deck that's just like an auto loss. Like, every single time. I mean, we cannot beat this deck, like, at all. I don't think you guys understand it. Some of you guys tell me to stay. It's like you guys want me to suffer. Who wants to? I don't want to suffer. I, I understand, like, this looks like a, a crap, like, situation. He didn't do much, but, like, this is... They have endless recursion. And he's got the Mudora, which doesn't matter against us because... I mean, it, it doesn't matter against us because we don't really even use the graveyard. But... It's whatever. I guess we'll stick around a little bit just to see see how things go. Alright, they're going to go to end phase. They're not even going to attack, which is weird. Why would you not attack? Alright, why would you not attack? That's a great question. I'm in shock. Like, an intelligent thing to do would be to attack, but this guy just doesn't attack. Uh, we've got the messenger piece. <laughs> I just realized why he didn't attack. <laughs> I just... Uh, yeah, he didn't attack because I had messenger of peace. Uh, honestly, is there a point to not, like... Is there a point to Messenger of Peace here? I don't know. He can destroy... Like, Messenger of Peace isn't really doing anything in this matchup because you can destroy it, hit the monster anyway. Uh, we're going to activate this because this can special summon itself since we control no face-up special face up non-effect monsters. So, since this card's face down, all our monsters are technically you know, the right thing. Uh, so, we're going to summon this. And then we're going to normal summon Dark. And if we want to go into two rank fours, we can actually summon out that too. But, I mean, the issue is... Theoretically, we can make a Time Thief Redoer. But our problem is a Dorama Cannon. Okay, so he's going to book everything. If I take this card right now and it books on my side of the field, I get to keep it forever and I get to use its effects. But none of its effects are applied to me anyway, so it's fine. He's going to book everything I have. And honestly, I'm kind of okay with that. I don't really care. I can flip this. He has more. He has 2100 defense, so there's no point. So I'm just going to go to end phase. That was like a weird time to book of moon the field. All right, so he's going to be able to special summon a labyrinth monster. Pro Lovely labyrinth is honestly against us pretty good. But the other one is even better. Yeah, Lovely labyrinth is good. We can actually steal the Lovely uh, labyrinth. And... I can't book La Lovely Labyrinth. I wish I could. Because if I could book La Lovely Labyrinth, he's going to activate this Labyrinth card. I think I'm going to respond. He's going to be able to pop a, tr a card non-targeting with Lovely Labyrinth if I leave this on his side of the field. So, I honestly think I'm just going to crack down and take his, his monster. So, I'm going to take control of this one. Because if I don't, then I'm just going to lose a random card, which could very well be one of our back row anyway. So I might as well just take it. This duel seems somewhat winnable. Like usually Labyrinth is an auto loss. But this one actually does seem somewhat winnable. Even if this is a winnable duel. It's still going to take a while. Because obviously. It's Labyrinth. It's, it would take a while for a meta deck. So it's definitely going to take a while for our deck. I wish I could have taken this card. Before he activated the Book of Moon effect. Because then I would have been able to book this. 
and keep this and the the effect the crackdown effect would have been removed see this is where we're gonna kind of like suffer because he's gonna be able to do all this this is our turn too like what, what is he is this our turn or his turn whose turn is it we're in the end phase how do you even summon that in our end phase what happened how did this how did this come out what happened what went wrong oh it's this effect Special summon a fiend monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I know it went wrong. And then he's going to use all these effects. See, this is where we actually lose, where he has a bunch of cards that do stuff and we don't. He's going to activate the labyrinth effect to special summon that out. Uh, we do have the Paleozoic, so when he does attack, we're still good, but I guess we'll have to check it out. And we're still, we're still going here. It's taking forever, but our opponent is still going here. All right, he's going to keep... We're going to normal summon out this thing. The uh, Ariana again. To add a card. I don't know why I've been seeing this card so often. Like every single duel it seems like I see this card. I, I, there's cards that I legitimately multiple episodes in a row have not seen. I don't know if there's like a conspiracy behind this. But I swear to you I never see Dimensional Prison. I never ever see this card. I see Paleozoic this thing every single. Like every duel I see this card. And then the, the, the prison I never see. He's going to bounce his card back to his hand. Okay, fair enough. Honestly, after this, I don't think we're going to win this duel because I can't... So just to be clear, I can't target this thing because he has a set card. So this is essentially unoutable. He's going to just attack over these three monsters. Paleozoic does nothing. Uh, this will set... This will pop one card, but it can't be this. I, mean, I think we just lose this one. I don't think there's a chance that we win this. I could have, again, I could have just scooped right away. Like, I knew I wasn't going to win this. But some of you guys really are, like, convinced I should stay through these duels. Alright, we just lost a coin flip. Our opponent seems to be playing Earthbound Immortal. Never mind, not Earthbound Immortal. It's the Jack Atlas stuff. He's playing the Jack Atlas stuff. Not bad. It's kind of an interesting deck. Is this, I don't know if this is really beatable. But we'll see. We'll see. We have Lightning Vortex. So we'll stick this one out. Uh, we'll stick this one out. We'll see how this one goes. We have Barrier Statue plus Lightning Vortex, which is kind of good. Because yeah, we can use Lightning vor Vortex. And it, it's... We'll see. We'll see what they do. Because uh, they do have some fire monsters. But for the most part, they are Dark Dragons. It's incredible how low rarity this deck is in the... Like in real life, but like how high rarity is in here. So many SRs and URs and Rs and more SRs and more URs. This is a UR, which is like crazy that this is a UR because I'm pretty sure this is like a common in TCG. Kind of high rarity considering you know, what it is. You can discard this card, add a level 3 or lower Fiend Tuner monster, which is pretty good. Pretty good. Can't be used except for fusion and synchros. Not a bad card. Horrible stats. But other than, you know, being able to search is pretty nice. Alright, our phone's going to keep going off here. It's actually shocking that they didn't make a structure deck for the Sacred Beast stuff. I mean, not Sacred Beast stuff. The Archfiend stuff. The Red Dragon Archfiend stuff. Honestly, I think it deserved the, a nice structure deck in this too. But, I mean, it's whatever. He's going to go into Red Hot Dragon Archfiend Bane. Which is a card that is okay it's okay the card that's really annoying is the one that uh can summon on our turn that's the one that's really annoying that's a really cool animation yeah like i said barrier statue plus lightning vortex is actually quite good so i think just with the hand that we have we have some decent plays here i think we're going to be able to do our thing because if we just normal summon barrier statue we just pop their entire field which is quite good. Are right, they going to add a red zone? What does this do? All right, he's going to send summon the hot red abyss. Now, the abyss changes a lot because lightning vortex would have beat his board, but abyss kind of negates lightning vortex, so that kind of ends that for us. We need to be able to bait other stuff out. I mean, the Messenger of Peace is pretty good, but it's not going to bait anything because this card lets you target a card and negate it. But he's not going to negate the Messenger of Peace on my turn. So that this this thing kind of killed everything for us now. I don't think we're going to be able to do it. Now, it sucks that we didn't draw Horn of Heaven. 
I mean, it sucks that we didn't go first because Horn of Heaven would have been really good. We always see Horn of Heaven when our opponent's playing like a fusion deck. And then all of a sudden, it's like Horn of Heaven's like the most useless card. But like in a deck like this, Horn of Heaven would have been disgusting because it could have negated any one of these summons. It could have negated this, this, this. It doesn't matter. Uh, but they're going to go to end phase. They realistically only have one interruption, which is this dude. This dude brings something back. This dude doesn't really matter. In reality, their board's not actually that good, but we just don't have anything that stops their board either. So, I mean, if first things first, we activate this, hope they negate it. Fingers crossed they negate this effect. Fingers crossed that they negate this effect. Uh, because if they do, then we kind of can wreck their board here, but if they don't, then we're in trouble. Yep, that resolves. Again, I can activate R Lightning Vortex. I just have to hope that they don't activate it. I have to hope that they don't activate this card. But, I mean, I don't have any other choice. I a Sioux Ship doesn't do anything because it doesn't have enough attack to get over any of these cards. Uh, Barrier Statue does nothing. Yeah, what I can is just, I can Normal Summon Barrier Statue. But no, he could just, I was going to say, I can Normal Summon Barrier Statue. But he could just literally just negate this anyway. Or he could just negate the Barrier Statue. Like, he can negate either one. It doesn't matter. I mean, I guess we can special summon this out. There's no there's no use in not summoning that out. And then I guess we can summon out the barrier statue. Why not? I'm just trying to get him to bait any, bait him into anything. Like, just, if he can bait, we can bait out one negate, which with our hand isn't looking too good. Yeah, he's going to use the red zone. He can tribute pop or something, right? We can activate lightning vortex. Lightning Vortex, if, if this sticks, we win the du we, we can win the duel if it gets. We'll have to see. He's going to activate this, and that's pretty much the game. There's nothing I can do. I'm, 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 I'm cooked there. He's got three monsters with 3,000 plus attack, and I, I had one going second card, essentially. All right, we just won the coin flip. I, I'm kind of an idiot because we always play at peak hours, but it's just these are the hours that are available to me. Uh, we won the coin flip. We have a really good hand. We have Barrier Statue, Messenger of Peace. For, Forbidden Chalice, and there can only be one, so we're just going to activate all this stuff, and uh, pass, I mean, this is a really good hand, it's my fault, I keep act. I, I, like, the best time to play is in the middle of the day, like, the middle of the day, like, I don't want to, like, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., somewhere around that time, that's, like, the absolute best time to play, but I never have time during that time, and that's where in all of, like, the, the fun people to play against are, you know, the Exodia, the... Uh, the Dark Magician players, the Volcanic player. Like, that's when all of the fun decks are playing. Unfortunately, this is not the hour that all of the fun decks are playing. Uh, I'm playing at, like, 8 p.m. on a Saturday. This is peak hours. This is when everybody who has nothing to do is playing. Our opponent is... I, this is good to see. This is what you want to see. He's playing... He has Luster Drag, and he's beefing it up, and I have messenger of peace okay i i'm fine with that and he can't attack because obviously he's gonna keep beefing it up great okay fair enough let him keep beefing it up because that means if we just pop that one monster everything else is is good all right he's gonna go to battle he can't attack it doesn't matter all right back to our turn let's see what we get we need a way to pop this if we pop this we start getting in on stuff we can't do anything with that right now because that does not have enough attack. I guess we do activate Messenger of Peace. We have to stall it out a little. I guess we summon Analyzer and just pass on an Analyzer. Sioux Ship, like I said, does virtually nothing right now anyway. So I think we just pass. Sioux Ship is... Activate Jar of Greed. Okay, like I said, this is the kind of stuff I want to see. We just pass on this. Alright, he's going to summon out the Mad Dog of Darkness. I love this card. This card looks so cool. I remember this was in... I think it's in Magician's Force. I had this card. It was in 1900. Or was it in Magician's Force? It might have been in something else. But I remember this card uh, was pretty good stat-wise at the time. Same thing with this, honestly. This is 1600 defense. This is what. This is the only thing that's better about this card. Is that it has 1600 defense. He's really beefing up this Luster Dragon. I... Have to find a way to get out and get over it. Because <laughs> right now I have no way to get over this Luster Dragon. Alright, I just realized I know how to get over this Luster Dragon. If I get a level 4 monster, which we do, and I'm not going to activate this. I'm not going to pay this. Uh, activate. Nope. So that'll get destroyed. And now I have a way to get over this Luster Dragon. So I'm going to normal summon Nefariousness. And I can go into a Synchro, or I can go, which I'm not going to. I'm just going to go into Gunkin Sue Ship. With these two, 
Here, I'm going to attack over one of these. Yeah, that's fine. So I think we're in good shape here. So we're going to enter battle phase. Attack over this. Yeah, we're going to attack over this. And then we're going to destroy the other guy. Actually, I just realized one per once per turn during your standby phase, inflict 500 of the control of this card. We could have just sat on this and kept burning our opponent if we really wanted to. But we're not going to do that. So we're going to activate the Shari. Uh, we're going to pop the Luster Dragon. And then all this stuff's going to get popped. This is going to go back on the top of his deck mandatory. Uh, which is awesome because now he's stuck on it. Uh, we're going to activate the Forbidden Chalice here. Uh, to beef this up. It's going to negate it, but it's fine because I want to do some more damage. And the reason I'm negating it is so I can activate Bestial Magnemut real quick. So we're going to go to main phase 2. We're going to activate Bestial Magnemut. Because now that this is negated, we can special summon other monsters. We're going to banish his monster so we can search out this dude. And then we're going to be able to also search with the Bestial Magnemut. And I think we're going to search something. We'll find out in the end phase, I guess. We also could have actually linked these two away if we really wanted to. So we're going to search out... Tiamaton we can't summon anyway, but eventually we're going to be able to summon Tiamaton. Because obviously the card comes up a lot. Now what I now what is going to happen here is... I know he's got Horn of the Unicorn in his hand, but... I don't know the other two cards. I'd imagine they're probably normal monsters that are 1900 attack or 2000 attack or something. But we're in a good situation. Yeah, 1900 attack. Exactly. This Saber Source. And we already have this. So he's probably going to attack over the Barrier Statue in next turn. We should have we should have the game on board. If we draw a Spall card, then we pretty much have game on board. Because we just set it in this column. Horn of the Unicorn again. Uh, that is somewhat scary, but it's still fine. It's still fine. If he actually played around the columns. The Iron Dragon, he actually played around that. Because if he activated it in that column, we actually could have just summoned appropriately and you know dumb things it's gonna attack over the sioux ship which does hurt and he's got a little bit more than our monster which does suck but as long as we like i said if we draw a spawn trap card actually no even if we draw a spawn trap card it doesn't really matter yeah it doesn't really matter now that's a good spawn trap card though I think we just set this right here. We can't summon Tiamaton right now because of a variety of reasons, but what are we going to be summoning? The Hida. Hida has no fire monster, so it would be pointless anyway. I think we just go to end phase, switch this to defense, and go to end phase. Next turn, we can rob the Crackdown. If you can rob with Crackdown, we can rob the Saber Source. There are certain times where our best cards actually conflict. Barrier Statue is one of our best cards, the Fire Barrier Statue, but then again, so is Iron Dragon. But in this weird situation, sometimes we have the Barrier Statue and the Iron Dragon actually conflict. Uh, we have There Can Only Be One, which I could use to out as monsters. But if I do that, then I can't activate There Can... If I use There Can Only Be One to out as monster, then I can't... Then I can't Special Summon the Iron Dragon Tiamaton. But I think it's fine, though. We, it doesn't matter if we can't special summon Iron Dragon Tiamaton. So he's going to attack with this. I'm going to activate There Can Only Be One. So I'm going to out both his monsters. One, he's going to be able... He's going to be forced to out his first monster. And then the second monster I'm going to steal with Crackdown. Alright, so now he's done that. I'm going to activate Crackdown. And just steal the Saber Source. Put it over here. And that's it. Now he has got one hard in hand. Now, this hand was disgusting. This this is literally some of the best hands we could have possibly produced. We had Barrier Statue, There Can Only Be One, Crackdown, Tiamaton, Bistial Mag. Like, look at these cards that we have access to. Like, where are these hands against Duelists that don't suck? Uh, so we switch to attack mode. We can go into Hida, what the hell is Hida doing? He's not doing shit, but we, I kind of want to put this on top of his deck. So if I put this on top of his deck, it's just, he's going to draw this again. So if this isn't a normal monster, it does nothing. Yeah, I, I kind of want to put this card on top of his deck. So I'm going to, he's not special summoning anyway, so I'm just going to link these two away. I'm going to place this right here. He's got no fire monsters, but again, he wasn't really special summoning all that much anyway. This is mandatory, has to go on the top of his deck. Um, 
and now we just go to battle phase and do some decent damage actually 25 and 1850 and we're very close to winning this possibly so we set this here and we just pass and hopefully we can win this one because we have Tiamaton and some other stuff to follow up with. So we know one of them's Horn of the Unicorn. We don't know what other card he's got in hand, but one of them is an Equip Spell that is fairly useless. So as long as he doesn't have a 1900 attack monster, we're good to go. As long as it's like a trap card or something. Plus what's good about the Hita is if we lose Hita, if Hita gets destroyed by battle or card effect, um, then we get to add a fire monster, which we can ba add back the fire barrier statue anyway. Oh, which is nice because yeah we get that fire barrier statue back no matter what or a fire monster with 1500 or less defense which is actually the sioux ship too we can add that back to our extra deck because it's only 300 defense all right they're going to go to end phase obviously they don't have anything we do not want to activate the nefariousness actually we could have activated nefariousness and popped hita and then added back the barrier statue so we actually could have done something cool there um, we probably should have done that in the end phase, but we don't need to do that. We don't need to waste too much time. Let's go to battle phase and and win this game. That's it. Let's go get let's go get some packs. That's what I'm excited about. After a few tough, 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 really tough matchups, I want to open some packs. All right, so we are ranking up, which is you know it's whatever. We we're in gold one. Like I said, gold doesn't matter. We've got one of the fusion targets for flame swordsman, and we got one legacy ticket. Okay, let's open up this pack. Let's see what we get. It's glowing. Look at that. I'm so excited. Let's see if it's a real glow or a fake glow. Because sometimes we get fake glows. Uh, we've got goddess guidance. I don't think this is really usable for us. It's a Valkyrie card. We pulled so much random stuff like that magic key fusion summon one magic key monster from your extra deck using monster from your hand or field is yeah i don't think uh or ritual summon a magic key card which again i would i am if i am very willing to play magic keys but we just have to pull more of them uh so that's going to take time the warlock it's not really a usable card infernity wildcat is not really a usable card because we don't have too many infernities or we don't have enough. Ancient Gear Beast is not good. Molting Escape is not really good, but we don't have that many reptiles anyway. And the last card is Abyss Sphere, which is a Mermel card. Uh, yeah, this has been, this was just a bad pack overall. And what sucks even more is that this was glowing for no reason. Uh, I just tricked this, but it happens. Nothing you can really do. Uh, if it's a rainbow glow, it would have been crazy. All right, now we have our Legacy Ticket, which is again glowing. A second ago, the pack was glowing. Seems to not mean much. Uh, Synchro, I think we have this card. We read it before. No, we haven't, but this card's not that good if I remember correctly. Uh, and then this actually is glowing, so we'll see what's underneath here. DD Marksman King Tell. Two level five monsters. All right, so this card's not terrible, uh, and you can actually summon it with a rank four DDD monster. I don't think we have, but it's honestly not the worst card in the world. We just, two level five monsters is, is not bad, but actually we can make this in our chaos deck because we have multiple like two level five monsters in there but yeah we can actually make we have like the tricky we have vice dragon like we have we have stuff definitely we definitely have dark we definitely have level five monsters so we, this is very much a summonable card without a doubt this is definitely a playable all right we just lost a coin flip our opponent went first and very quickly set two cards it's like a world wreck i've never seen somebody set two cards as quickly as this guy set two cards our hand's not looking too bad. I mean, I'll say that. We have Ad Emancipator. We can't summon Ron Ryu, Barrier Statue, and Small World. I don't know what direction to even go. I have no idea what they're playing. And our hand is not the worst or the best. We're just kind of okay. Barrier Statue's usually pretty good. Small World. I don't even know what we can really go into with Small World here. That would even help the kind of undo our hand here. Yeah, honestly, I don't even think that there's really a monster that we can really go into with a small world. I think we just normal summon a barrier statue and see what see what they have in response. I guess that's the best thing that we could possibly do. Barrier statue is usually pretty good, so we just go to battle phase, attack, and we'll see what they have because so far they produced a whole lot of nothing. So we'll attack with barrier statue and pass. We didn't like. All those games we had all of the barrier statue defense cards which were pretty good this time we did not get them so we'll set these two and we'll just pass uh yeah usually we 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 draw like the sakuretsu armor and the paleozoic and the crackdown we draw all of these cards that don't do anything in so many situations uh and we we didn't draw them now so i guess we'll see what they're playing they're gonna fall in a valve as okay i mean 
They're going to get over our monster, so that we know. We're definitely going to lose the monster, because even if I double barrier, double Forbidden Chalice, I only match his monster, so I'm giving up three cards for nothing. Uh, yeah, I guess we, we lost the barrier statue. Now at least he has a monster, so how to emancipate our analyzer can be special summoned. Nahata is pretty cool, but Nahata cannot be used with the analyzer. If only your opponent controls. Yeah, these two conflict, which is unfortunate. Small world is cool, but not cool enough. All right, so I think we definitely use the analyzer. Yeah, I think we definitely summon the analyzer. We at least activate it, see what our opponent has, see if they have any responses. They have Max C, they have Max C, you know, different things. We got to see what they're doing. Max C, okay. So that sucks. Nothing we can really do there. There's really nothing we can do. We just kind of live with it. So we're going to summon this, and I think we just attack. No, we activate this just in case they have an Ash. If they Ash us, that's actually fantastic. They're not going to Ash us, so we're just going to reveal a bunch of stuff. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is, but we'll put this stuff back. Can we search Bestial Magnum? I want to search Bestial Magnum. It's something I want to search. 2,000 defense. We probably can get to it. Um, so, this is a dragon that has nothing to do with Bestial Magnum. So, we'll see if we can search it. I think that card would actually help. Because I'm going to attack over the Analyzer right now. So we're going to activate Small World. We're going to see if our opponent has a Negate. It still doesn't. Uh, run Ryu, and then we're gonna, we gotta get a 2,000 defense monster. This can search Bistial Magnum, right? Yeah, because they have nothing in common. So we'll get rid of the tin goldfish, and this should be able to get to Bistial Magnum. And Bistial Magnum is way out here, perfect. And during our opponent's turn, we'll be able to get to it. And right now, I'm just gonna attack over, I'm gonna run over the, uh, Fall, actually, should I attack over Fallen of Albaz? Because is it really doing anything on the field right now that's scaring us? It's not really doing anything on the field. And if I attack him and he has like the red card, the F Fallen of Red or whatever. I, I forget that card's name. I think we just save what we have and we just pass. I can summon this. I can normal summon this and go into Time Thief. But then I'm playing with fire. So... I could set this too, but it's fine. I don't think I need to. So I'm just going to pass here. If I attack into this, it doesn't really actually help me to attack into this. And he can't really super poly us right now anyway, because I have Analyzer. Like, Analyzer doesn't really matter. It doesn't, you can't super poly with this. All right, he's going to activate the Sword Soul of Moe. So I'm going to activate Forbidden Chalice to negate it. And yeah, I'm going to negate it with the Forbidden Chalice so he's not going to get a token. He's playing like the full anime deck. Not the anime deck, the lore deck. I'm going to negate that. He's going to activate the, of course, because he controls a negated monster, he can summon the Iris Sword Soul. And this card's actually really good. And then he's got the Bestial. We've got the Bestial Magnemite as a follow up. It's not good enough. And now he's going to activate blackout to destroy all of our cards i mean i might as well activate forbidden chalice um i could do his monster but then i just beef him up for no reason so i'm gonna just beef up my own monster why not so i'm gonna activate that on my own he's gonna destroy all my cards anyway yeah pistol magnumus not doing much unless he links away if he, if he links away then pistol magnumus doing a lot Alright, he's going to battle phase. And he's got some pretty good cards here. I mean, Iris Sword Soul is pretty strong. And this this kind of sucks for us, but I mean, we're going to have to see what we get. Penguin Squire. So we can set a monster and then s activate Penguin Squire. I think that's the best thing we've got. Activate Penguin Squire. He can activate this effect to summon a monster from his hand. But all these effects are really good. Maxi again, dude. Again with the maxi. But we have no choice. We kind of have to do our... Like, we have to do something. Yeah, reduce by one. He can activate this effect to summon a monster from his hand if he wants to. This sucks for us because it's like... If I just pass, I kind of just lose all my monsters. I lose the duel if I pass. So, I just have to play into maxi. This is why I hate maxi. 
I, I, just, I have to play into it. There's nothing I can do. I can't do anything. I'm obligated to play into it. If I summon this, he can just destroy it. So no point in summoning this. If I summon Time Thief, he can also try to destroy it, but Time Thief floats, so it's fine. So we're going to summon Time Thief out, and if he activates the Iris Sword Soul, then we just float into something else. Or we don't float, but we move it out of the way, you know the story. So he can activate Iris Sword Soul to pop one of our cards. But Time Thief obviously can dodge. It's the only reason I went into this. Yep, he's going to activate the effect to pop. Uh, obviously, we won't have much of a choice. We're going to activate Time Thief. And the really unfortunate part is that I still don't have any lights or darks in either one of our graveyards. Uh, not, neither of our graveyards, with all of the cards in both of our graveyards, there are still not enough lights and darks anywhere to summon a Bestial Magnum. Uh, so this dude comes back. And now... We just hope we get a good card off the top. That's our, that's the hope, right? That is definitely the hope. So standby phase, we're going to activate this effect. If we get a trap card, we're doing pretty well. Because then we can put like Iris Sword of Soul back or Fallen of Alabaz or something. We can put something back. We get a monster. I can't afford to dodge because if I dodge, I lose. Actually, if I dodge, I don't lose because then I get to mow you. Hmm. He's going to activate that. The sacred, basically, monster reborn. Honestly, I don't think that there's much we can do. Even if we activate Time Thief, we kind of lose. But I mean, I guess we'll wait it out. But I don't think this one is a winnable one. He can go into the Xiao Fang or whatever his name is, the level 8. I don't think that we could possibly win this duel. Yeah, he's going to summon Shi Shao. That's what it is. Shi Shao. Yeah, Shi Shao and Mo Yi. He's going to be able to draw and he's going to be able to do all this. I, I, mm, This is tough. This is tough. He's going to be able to draw. He's going to be able to do that. I mean, it's like, what are we supposed to do? The guy just had maxi after maxi. Unluckily, we just cannot get a, a lighter dark in graveyard despite the fact that he has three. A dark, a light, a light. And then we have a dark and a light underneath. But we can't get a damn thing in the graveyard. <laughs> Uh, so, now he's gonna search, yeah, he's, Br Brown's coming out, this duel's over, there's nothing we can do. Alright, so our opponent's gonna Bistial, Rubellion, search Saranir, and then set two cards, which is, honestly, looking pretty good. Um, we have another, you know, cards again that con conflict a little bit, we have Photon Thrasher, and Nahata, which, they, these cards actually do, must be special in their hand if you control no monsters, and this... We have to control no monsters. So either way, these two kind of conflict. Which is annoying. But it's the reality of the situation. We have multiple conflicting cards. But, I mean, they all get the Time Thief, which is good. Uh, we can get to... Time Thief. We can get to Photon Thrasher and... A Barrier Statue. Or we can get to a Nahata and a Barrier Statue. So I think I'm going to activate the Nahata. See what I get. Special the Nahata. And then we're going to special normal summon the barrier statue. I'm going to go to battle, see what our opponent's playing. It's probably, if I had to guess, an Ash Blossom. Never mind, it's not an Ash Blossom. It's a Tragedy, which does not... Ooh, damn it. Why didn't I attack with this? I don't know why I didn't do that. All right, reactivate Messenger of Peace and we pass. Damn it. I don't know why I didn't attack with this. Whatever, whatever, whatever. It's not the end of the world. It's 1,000 damage. 800 damage. It's not the end of the world. But I don't know why I clicked that so quickly, but... Misplays will happen occasionally. That was a horrible one, but I mean it's 800 damage. It's only 10% of his life points. I, I messed up a little bit. I clicked it so quickly without thinking. But he's got we've got barrier statue. He drew the Springins girl, which is gonna allow him to get to something, but Messenger of Peace is gonna prevent him from attacking, so it does not matter. He's gonna get to Brandon in high spirits. Now the fortunate thing is that Generally speaking, branded decks don't have a ton of back removal. So at least that part is quite good. He's got Saranir and stuff like that. He can discard Saranir. He can do quite a few things. But like I said, the good thing is that they don't have a lot of back removal. This is going to allow him to search any fusion, fusion card during the next standby phase. 
Polymerization, normal spell or fusion, normal spell, which cannot search super poly, which is good. I think we keep around the messenger of peace for a little while longer. Right now, he can't special summon anything, so we're we're in a good situation uh, where he can't special summon. So at least that is quite good. And if I remember correctly, I don't think Branded actually does have a lot of monsters that are easy to. I don't. Uh, their normal summons are all over 1500 attack. So I think that part is pretty good for us. Yeah, all their normal summons are are pretty strong. So like Fallen of Albaz, 1800. He doesn't realize he can't attack. Fallen of Albaz is 1800. This is 400. Biss deals obviously he can't summon. Um, under Barrier Statue. He can add that card back, but I mean, it's irrelevant because I don't think that card can do anything unless he's got the right cards. Uh, choose one Fusion Monster. Yeah, you need a Fusion Monster. A lot of these things need Fusion Monsters. Which, as long as he doesn't have fusion monsters, are good. Fusion deployment's unusable right now, so all of this is fine right now. Everything right now, we're gonna save the. Yeah, we're gonna definitely say yes. We're gonna activate this. We're gonna keep resolving it because right now we want it to resolve. Uh, if we can only get past this, that would be awesome, but we can't right now. So I think we just normal summon the bear, this dude, the familiar possessed, and I think we just pass on this. Uh, because the barrier statues are doing too much work. I should have switched these two defense mode, but right now they're not Doesn't really matter as long as they don't draw right gecky or something. We're good. All right, they're gonna tribute summon into Druus worm which again doesn't really matter because Druus worm can't attack anyway, but in Druus worm Can uh, send a special summon monster if this card sent to the graveyard target special nothing we have a special summon So it doesn't matter. He's gonna go to battle phase still can't attack. It doesn't matter. So he's going to go to end phase here. And we're going to... That's not bad, actually. Memories of an adversary when he does attack, finally. <laughs> finally does attack. He's not going to be able to do anything. Um, does this target and send? Target, special summon monster, opponent control, send it to the graveyard. So we have to find a way to get rid of this. And then we can start attacking. Because we have a bunch of weak monsters, but... We have to find a way to get rid of this so that we can attack with all of our weak monsters. But right now, we don't really have a way to do that. I think we just pass right now. We just pass on our really weak monsters. Because I don't really want to get rid of the barrier statue. Because the barrier statue is what's basically protecting us. That is, it is what's protecting us right now. The barrier statue and the messenger of peace is what protecting, it's what's, what's protecting us. So if I get rid of either of those two, I'm kind of screwing myself. Well, we're getting closer and closer to where we can actually do something. He's going to summon the Fallen of Albaz, which does pretty much nothing. Because he can't fusion summon. He just kind of summons a monster. Crackdown's pretty decent. I think we're getting closer to where we can start attacking. So I think we pay it one more time. Yes, we set the crackdown. And next turn, I think we go, we go, we go to war next turn. So I think we end phase here, and next turn we go to war. Now, they do have Druid Swarm, so they can out things, but we could steal his Druid Swarm. See, if we had Druid Swarm one turn ago, we could have just moved it out of the way and dealt with the things, but now we kind of are less inclined to do that. But next turn, we could just use the Messenger of Peace already, so that's good. Our opponent's going to activate the, the uh, not kit, the Tragedy to add that back. It's fine. Next turn, like I said, we have we have stuff. We have Crackdown. He's going to set that back. And he's going to set another card. He's going to probably just pass. He's going to go to Battle Phase. He can't attack again because of Messenger of Peace. And we're just going to End Phase. Lightning Vortex is actually quite good. We don't have any special summon monsters. I think we just Lightning Vortex and attack directly with three monsters. I think that should actually be better. Yeah, I think I just do that. I don't even need to... I'm going to resolve this, yes. Uh, yes, we want to pay, and then we just discard Photon Thrasher and uh, activate Lightning Vortex. That should be actually 100% better. We have no special summon monsters, so Druus Worm does nothing. I was going to steal the Druus Worm, but no need. Absolutely no need. Reactivate Lightning Vortex. I don't think they have any protection. They have chainable cards, but they have no protection, so all that gets destroyed. And Druus Worm. We have a special summon monster. What did I special summon? Oh, no. I forgot all about that. 
Yeah, I did special summon that. I forgot. That's the first. I saw. I special summon that, and I normal summon the bear statue. Fair enough. I mean, it goes sent to the graveyard. We still do eighteen hundred damage. Uh, Nahata did nothing on our board. <laughs> it's my fault. Uh, I think we just attack twice. Yeah, I think we just attack with the monsters that we have. And next turn, if they do anything, we crack down whatever in their normal summon is going to affect Valor, the barrier statue. Which is somewhat fine here. Now they're going to be able to use like Brandon and Red, stuff like that. He's going to use the High Spirits. Nothing I can really do about that. Uh, Magnemut's not live because he controls no monsters. If we, it'd be perfect if, if he had a monster right now. But once he has a monster, we're going to be able to do more stuff. He's going to send the Albion and the other card. And he's going to add the Cartesia, which you can't. It's like he can special summon it now. Anyway, continue to main phase. No, we're going to have to go to battle phase. We're going to attack with the monsters that we have. Arborea. The other one. How much attack is Cartesia? 15. 1,500 or more cannot attack, right? 1,500 or more. So Cartesia can't attack anyway. So we just pass. We just go to end phase now. And we can actually attack with Cartesia, if I'm not mistaken. He's going to be able to use a branded card or get a branded card. The ultimate floodgate battle. One day I have to sit down and create a fully villainous deck. <laughs> like a fully floodgate everything deck. I, I think I have to sit down and finally do that. The problem with the fully floodgate deck is that it can't go second at all. He's going to add Brandon and Red, which is not really all that great. Because he can't really use it because the bear statue is active. Unless he has a... Uh, uh, another card. Brandon Red is generally a pretty good card. I thought for the most part Brandon decks cut Brandon and Red, but obviously this guy still got it. Alright, then a normal summon Cartesia. Cartesia lets him fuse and stuff, but he can't do anything under Under Barry Statue it does pretty much nothing. He still can't attack. He doesn't seem to understand that. He's gonna main phase two and then pass. Uh end phase. I Probably should steal this on end phase. I think I am going to just steal this on end phase. So I'm going to steal it. Take the Cartesia. Move it out of the way. That can, that way he can attack. Our monsters can attack. Uh, nefariousness. Okay, that's another card. Uh, yes, we want to pay. Resolve this. Yes. Oddly enough, we can actually... We can actually go into is he does no point. There's no point to go into he does no fire monsters anyway. In his graveyard, they're all dark. But we can attack with the monsters that we have. So we can attack with the barrier statue, and we can attack with Arborea again. It's really it might come down to us really needing the attack from. It might come down to us really needing that attack from the other card from uh the other monster it might it might actually matter in the end the the four, 800 attack that i forgot to do from the nahata as we're doing damage so slowly we do an 1800 to turn which essentially we need five turns of those attacks he's going to summon a luber search fine with us he's going to search branded in high spirits He's going to go to battle phase. Still hasn't figured out that he can't do it. <laughs> and he's going to go to main phase two and pass. I think we can actually game this turn. If I do the math correctly, some judgment will help us game. Yeah, I think we can actually game this turn. So we just activate this. Resolve. Pay the, Don't pay the life points. No. Let our card get destroyed. And I think we can actually do things now. So we normal summon the nefariousness. We go into a rank 4 using two of our monsters. Probably his Ecclesia, actually. Go into the Sioux ship using his Ecclesia. Summon it right over here. And now we have enough to get over his monster. Now, the sad. Yeah, it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. 
I'm not going to actually trigger the effect of the Sioux ship, I don't think, because... How much attack do I have? Do I have enough to game him? I don't know if I have enough to game him, but it doesn't really matter, because we have memories of an adversary anyway. Uh, so we can block his attack next turn if I can't game him now. So we're going to attack over a Luber. I'm going to attack with this. I His back row has been totally useless, so I don't feel the need to pop it, because on the off chance that he has something like really weirdly good, I don't want to have... I don't want to trigger it. On, on the off chance that he's got some outrageously good card that does something in Graveyard. So I'm just going to sit on what I have. I'm going to set Solemn Judgment. Because Solemn Judgment, it's not like you can... It doesn't matter what column it's in anyway. We just pass on this, and he's got 350 life points. And we're pretty much, as long as... We have protection from whatever he can possibly destroy our back row or monsters with. With Solemn Judgment, we have that protection. If he attacks with something... Like in a Luber, we have memories of an adversary. So either way, I think that we're good. All right, he's going to summon Springin's Kid. I'm not going to negate that, negate that summon because I can just... Memories of an adversary. So there's no point to negate that. None of the branded cards pop spawn trap cards, so that's good. I don't think any of them pop monsters either. Branded Fusion doesn't do anything because there's no fire card that he can use. So that doesn't matter. So as long if he attacks, we're good. He's going to go to battle phase. He thinks he's probably in the clear. We're going to activate the Memories of an Adversary. We're going to pay the life points. We'll see if he has anything. If he does, I mean, again, we have Judgment to stop whatever foolishness is going to happen here. Nope, nothing. So we're going to have to pay 1,700 life points. His monster's banished. And we won! Wow, okay. Yeah, that was a pretty good deck. I mean, that's that's branded. That's that's a tier... What is that? The best second best deck in the game right now? Even though it got hit? Second best deck in the game and we beat it. That's, that's pretty solid. And we won second. All right, we got two legacy tickets. Not bad. All right, let's open up this master pack. Let's see what we get at this one. We do deserve something nice in here, but I guess we'll see if we get something cool or not. It doesn't really... It's not a huge deal. Battling Boxer card, Reptilian card, Jurak Dino, multiple copies, multiple copies of this, uh, Zoot, multiple copies of this, uh, Lunalite Wolf's not terrible. I guess it's a fusion card. Uh, a Lunalite monster attacks the defensive position monster and flick piercing. That's not bad if you get some of the fusion monsters. And then the first effect uh, lets you fusion summon. Uh, which I believe we have one of the Lunalite Fusion monsters, but not enough to really play a full deck. Uh, if this had better stats, I would play it. And EMR is our second copy of EMR, and this is a good card, but we don't really play a machine deck, but that's not a bad card, though. All right, let's open these Legacy Tickets. Let's hopefully get something good out of these, because that, that pack wasn't, like... It's not unusable, it's just, yeah, it's not really in the direction we're headed. But I guess we'll see what we get out of here. Miss Judge... All right, this card kind of sucks. I mean, it's this is one of those cards like week one I may have played because it's if we get he two heads in a row, it's a negate. Uh, this card's not good. If we get two heads in a row, we get to negate a card. I mean, that basically can negate any card as long as you get two heads in a row, which is what is it like a twenty five percent chance, or it's one out of two, and then it's a one out of two chance, and then a one out of two chance again. Elder with six samurai is a free special summon. If your opponent controls a monster, you control the monsters. It's a level three free special summon warrior. Not terrible. Uh, this is another not terrible card. Banish the Tuner Special Summon this card. Not terrible at all. I think it was used in Adamancipator a long time ago. But like, I, honestly, all of these cards aren't bad. This is not bad, not, not bad, not bad, not bad. Just not great. And then this is not good. All right, we just won the coin flip. Our hand's looking solid right now. Uh, Lightning Vortex is a little out of place, but screw it. It doesn't really matter because we've got two really good trap cards. So we're going to summon. We're going to normal summon again. Or normal summon for the first time, and then we're gonna go into probably Time Thief. Because it's not like we have Witch of the Black Forest or anything. Yeah, turn one. This is pretty much the best card that we've got. Time Thief is usually pretty good because at least we can start stacking certain things. Uh Broken Line right down the middle, because they always activate in the middle, never expecting it. And then we just pass. Uh Broken Line, it's crazy how much columns matter in our deck. It, it really is crazy. I'd play more broken lines if I could. This card is really it's it's essentially solemn judgment, as long as it's in the column. Uh, activate Time Thief, grab a card off the top of our opponent's deck. I uh, do not want a Trap Card, Compulsory Evacuation Device. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. So now we have multiple interruptions on the Time Thief, which is cool. And we have two interruptions with the other cards that we've got. So not bad. He's going to set three. And he has Compulsory, which is scary to me, but whatever. And this is Sky Strike Ace Ray is pretty good. This card's pretty good. And activate Time Thief again. I guess let's let's go for all three. Spell card. Let's 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 see if we can get that. Why not? Right, right. Why why not ask for the best? 
He's gonna labyrinth, big welcome labyrinth. That just killed everything. That killed all the happiness in my heart. I have no reason to activate and chain that because I mean, it's not gonna do much. Uh, and he's gonna activate the labyrinth card from hand. Again, there's nothing that we can really do about that. Now what's infuriating is that I actually can't really do anything about that. So he's going to summon the silver castle down the middle, which is good. But I think he can't be destroyed by card effects, right? Can't be destroyed by card effects as long as he controls set cards. Can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects. It's crazy for a monster you get to special summon for free. This, to give a little bit of context, this card is only 1,000 less attack than Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon, and it has the exact same effects. Um, we're going to get another trap card, evenly matched. That's pretty good because we can put this back there. Uh, we're going to activate Time Thief because we don't have a choice. Because if we don't activate Time Thief, we lose everything anyway. So, activate Time Thief. He's going to Ash our Time Thief. Wonderful. So, we're probably going to lose Time Thief here. If we want to save Time Thief, we have to go for the Crackdown. Yeah, I think we have to go for the Crackdown here. We have to force the Crackdown. So we'll activate Crackdown and target the lovely Labyrinth. Because we will lose Time Thief if we don't. Another Welcome Labyrinth. And we're going to end this entire chain. So we're going to activate Broken Line. We're trying our best. We're fighting our heart out here. But like I said, the problem is we're playing against Labyrinth. And this is the worst matchup we could possibly... I'd rather play anything else except Snake Eye. It's like Snake Eye, Labyrinth... Snake Eye, Labyrinth, and... Um, and that other deck and Sky Striker, like three decks, I absolutely wouldn't want to play because they just they, their their advantage loop is just too good, and their our floodgates really don't hinder them as much as we would like for them to hinder them. Uh, he can still pop one of our cards. He has this option. This uh, yeah, that's the best option because Crackdown our his monster can't attack anyway. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna attack with the Sky Striker. So we're gonna go to Battle Phase. We're gonna attack directly. And then we're going to tag out. We're going to activate the effect. And we're going to tag out into Hayate. Then we're going to tag directly. Now we don't have a card to send, but it's whatever. Uh, main phase two. We can special summon something, but I don't think it's going to really help. We can destroy this. If he hasn't activated it yet, it doesn't really matter. So we just end phase. We end phase, and that's about it. That's the best we've got. Now, hopefully, he doesn't have any labyrinth cards or trap cards, so he can't summon that thing in the hand or that thing in yeah that thing in his hand the uh lovely labyrinth hopefully he just doesn't have anything it's kind of bricks but i guess we'll find out nope he's got a uh welcome labyrinth which pretty much wraps up the duel because now he can summon this and then he's going to be able to summon a welcome la uh a lovely or either a lovely or a lady labyrinth from his deck and their 3000 attack He's going to summon Ariana. Alright, he's going to activate Ariana and he's going to activate Big Welcome to bounce something. So he's probably going to bounce the Lovely Labyrinth, I imagine. And then he can get it back to his own hand for free. But he can bounce Hayate. Hayate, if it goes to the extra deck, it doesn't... Um, I, actually, this still triggers because it's in the graveyard, but he's going to bounce his own. Because obviously, it, it's better to bounce your own monster on your opponent's side of the field. You get it back and you get to use it, but probably better for him he's gonna activate this to set it back and honestly like i said we are not i'm not scooping early we are not winning this grind game he's got one two three four five six cards uh he gets a every time a non labyrinth card is activated he gets to summon a fiend uh this lets him draw this lets him set like he's got so much going for him right now uh i, I can activate ray but again what is a ray doing 1500 attack ray is not doing much I'll see what I draw for turn, but this this duel's pretty much over. I'm not even joking with you. I think my record against against Labyrinth is that it doesn't do anything. I mean, that lets us get to a rank four, but this can't be destroyed or targeted right now. So Lightning Vortex does nothing. Uh, this lets me get to a rank four again. Pretty much does nothing. My my record against Labyrinth right now is like I have one win and I probably have like 20 losses against Labyrinth. This deck is unbeatable with a Masochist deck. I don't even know what I would have to pull. Like, it's just that good. 
All right, we just won the coin flip. Our hand's looking pretty good. We got tin goldfish and go and goblin merc, two starters uh, that do essentially the same thing. Uh, so, I mean, they literally do the same thing. There's no, the text is almost the same. It's literally the same text. I'm just looking at it. It's the same exact text, except this uh, changes the defense afterwards. Uh, okay, so we just summon this and uh, hope they don't have Maxi and friends. And we can get this stuff. So we're going to summon 10 goldfish. I, I really didn't even pay attention. They literally have the same exact text. Now we special summon, again, Time Thief because nothing else is worth it right now. We go into Time Thief, and we just set D Barrier and Memory Loss, and we pass, and we have Tiamaton in hand too. So if they summon anything in the middle column, we can Tiamaton and pop some other column. We actually probably should have put this like here. Uh, but now we just pass, and we have one, actually no, we have one interruption, another possible interruption, another possible interruption, and another possible interruption. But for the most part, we have one interruption here. We have one legitimate interruption. So we're going to activate the effect of Time Thief. Uh, we're going to get a Dimensional Wall off the top of their deck, which is scary because, you know, what this means, they're playing some sort of a burn deck. But we got Dimensional Wall, which means we can return something. We do have to watch out for certain things. Hopefully he sets a card here. Because on... Oh, man, he doesn't set a card here. Yeah, there's no nothing we can really do there. If, we, if he set a card right here, it would have been beautiful. Pop that whole column. I don't think there's really a point to do anything there, so we're going to activate this. He might have Lava Golem, too. That, I, I, I'm i pretty sure he might have. Spell card's pretty good. What is that? Forbidden Scripture. I'm going to activate to get a draw, because I think we need to. Fire Barrier Statue's pretty fire. So we're going to do that. And we're going to go to Battle Phase. How much do you think his monster is? I'll just attack with a Time Thief. I don't want to... Blue Eyes... Uh, he's going to activate that. I'm going to search. A blue eyes white dragon. That's just weird. And we're going to attack with barrier statue. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'll i take it. Uh, now, I, like I said, if he's got the... I don't know what he's playing. First of all, I don't know what he's playing because this is already a weird... I can't wait to check this out afterwards. Uh, for a second there, I was like, is this a bot? But it's not a Chinese name. It's a Japanese name. On top of it being a Japanese name, the blue eyes actually, like, actually legitimately search something. Which, yeah, I think he's just playing Blue Eyes with a couple weird cards. That's what I think he's actually playing. Which, this should be a fun duel if he can out my Barrier Statue. If he can't out my Barrier Statue, well, then it's going to be it's gonna be a duel, alright. Alright, he's about to end his turn. I'm cool with that. Back to our turn, so we can do some more damage here. He's going to discard the Abyss Dragon. Yeah, this this is like... Barrier Statue is super effective against Blue Eyes if we manage to go first. No, 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 okay. Just click the wrong effect. Yeah, Barrier Statue's really good against Blue Eyes, like, outrageously so. Uh, we're gonna get another spell card. That would've helped him. <laughs> that would've really helped him. Too bad. Too bad. You're playing against the wrong person. We're gonna activate that and uh, draw a card. Threatening Roar, even better. Okay, uh, I think I'm gonna actually get rid of the Tiamaton because we gotta put we gotta put damage on board here. Uh, I'm going to activate this, get rid of Tiamaton. I know it doesn't seem like the right thing to do, but I, I need to get the barrier statue. So I, I, I'm i going to get to another barrier statue, I think. Uh, this is not usable. So this probably, if we get rid of, we can get to a barrier statue. Because the only thing this has in common with barrier statues is that it's level 4. And then I think we just get to another barrier statue. Now he's got to deal with two barrier statues, two threatening roars, all that fun stuff. Grand Horn of Heaven and others. Plus he already got rid of the... Harpy's Feather. This is like this is like what you call checkmate. This is we're getting there. You know, it's like it's two barrier statues surrounding a time thief. Read, it's like a gang uh, surrounding a time thief with a threatening roar and a dimensional barrier. And you know what? Just for the heck of it, we'll set this. Even though there's no possible way for him to special summon, we'll set it anyway. Now, can he destroy this board? Of course he can, because if he's got Lava Golem, he's got us beat. Let's be honest. But he's have to. He's gonna have to have Lava Golem. Plus, what's weird is he does have trap cards, because I've got trap cards under my Time Thief. I've got the Dimensional Wall under my Time Thief. We're going to get a Jet. Oof, thank God I don't have to deal with that. This is punishment for all the times that we had to deal with Jet. Jet is outrageous. The best Blue Eyes card. It really is. Especially you know, against this deck, and we won. Thank God. And we didn't have to deal against Jet. Beautiful. What a clean, clean win. All right, so we got two Legacy tickets. Wonderful. Now, the hope is that we pulled something really good. Let's see what we get. Hopefully, we get something really, really good. 
That way we can actually... We just have not been seeing hollows. Uh, we've got Symphonic Warrior Guitar. This card's actually not bad. You can discard one card, special summon with Symphonic uh, Warrior from your deck. Uh, which, if it's the level 4, we can do something. And then also on Normal Summon, it can target a Symphonic Monster Graveyard special summon. So maybe as an engine, it wouldn't be too bad, but it's a little bit... We'll have to see what else we have, but it's not the worst, right? So we can discard a card to special summon a level 4, but then you have to give up two cards to special summon one level 4. Not, like, that great. Uh, during the main phase, tribute a level 7 or higher monster. Special summon this card from your hand. It's, our deck does not. Special summon level 7 or higher monsters. Uh, righty driver's a good card. If we can get to lefty driver, we have as a thought, and that wouldn't be too bad. So if we had three... Righty drivers, one lefty driver. We could do something. Marincess Cascade can't really do anything with that. Fable Treason. What a dramatic name. Target a Fable Monster Graveyard. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be usable. Um, Fenrir Sword. It's Fenrir. This is the first. This is uh, the closest thing to Fenrir that we've got. Yeah, if only we had more Utopia cards, we'd I'd actually use that. Uh, can't use that. And Pearl, the Dark Lord, which this is one of the not so used Dark Lord. Yeah, this is one of the ones that aren't really used. So out of all of this stuff, we really didn't get something very. All right, let's open these Legacy tickets. We have no Hollows that I can see of, but I mean, yeah, we don't know. We don't know till I until we really open them. Elemental Valkyrie, not really a super usable card. And then we've got Spirit Burner, which is... Is this for Spirit Monsters? Not a Spirit card, but it's not really too usable for us. So it technically is a Spirit card, because... Yeah, but technically it's not usable, because we don't really have cards that return themselves. Uh, Queen's Bodyguard, Allure Queen, support, not really good. And then what in the world is this? The Melting Red Shadow. Can anybody explain what this is? This is another Aqua Level 2 monster I would have loved to have been in the game in about 2016 but unfortunately it was stuck in the ocean. Alright, our opponent's going to set a monster. I mean, this is pretty good. I mean, this is good to see. I'm not going to lie. D-Fissure is pretty solid too. Now we've got something to combo off with our barrier statue. I don't know what this is. It could be an Ash Blossom, honestly. That's what it most likely is. It's an Ash Blossom. This is our best normal summon that we've got right now. And uh, we'll attack over his monster. That'll go to Great Banish Pile, and then we attack directly with this Barrier Statue. Again, I think we just pass here. Now, unfortunately, the reality is is that he's got... If he is playing Heroes, which is most likely what he's playing, he's got things that can play around the Barrier. Yeah, like, like, like a regular normal summon here like this. Can play around it, which sucks, but... The, the barrier statue is definitely going to, uh, first of all, it's got rid of his battle phase, but more importantly, the purple poison, not the purple poison, the, uh, now when he links stuff away and fusions away, uh, dimensional fissure is going to send it to the graveyard, so at least that's good. Uh, Dragoodies, we, it's a little late. Dragoodies came a little too late. We could just normal summon Dragoodies. Even if it's destroyed, it doesn't matter where it goes. If it's in its owner in the monster zone, it gets destroyed. We get to search. So it's not like we have a barrier statue on field. I think I just want to save this. So I think Dragoodies we just summon and attack with. Yeah, we can either go Dragoodies or we can go into this dude right here, the Zeta. Dragoodies, we can just go with the double attacking, or we can go into Zeta, or we can go into Time Thief in one of these slow down game states. It's either Zeta or Time Thief. And I honestly think probably Zeta is just slightly better in this situation. So I think we just summon that and then we go into Zeta. There are been, there have been some remote situations where Zeta has been better than Time Thief for us. He's going to go into Solemn Strike. I'm not going to lie. I didn't see that coming. Uh, that sucks, but I guess we just pass. I guess we just pass on that. I did not see a Solemn Strike coming, I'll be honest with you. Alright, he's going to go straight to Battle Phase. Attack us directly. This is another deck that's kind of interesting, like, what is our opponent playing? He's like a, playing like a modern hero beat deck. He's going to go to End Phase, and Broken Line's pretty good, because we can just set it in this column. So if he's got another Solemn, <laughs> it's pretty good. So we're going to Normal Summon. He could have another Solemn, it could be another Judgment or something. He's going to let us go to Battle Phase, cool. So we're going to go to Battle Phase, we're going to attack him. 
and the good thing is it doesn't go to graveyard so he doesn't get the effect the sent to graveyard or banished uh, only if you use this material so it doesn't matter anyway uh, so then we go broken line set it right here so if he ever activates this card we can negate it with broken line which is pretty cool He's gonna use a hero lives which again is pretty fine oh my god I can't believe he did that um, he summoned that in that column, which means we can actually use the broken line to destroy it. And if he does have a solemn strike or something back there, well, he can activate that. I mean, not a solemn strike. If he has a judgment, but he has to pay 4,000 life points. So his card's going to get negated and destroyed and banished. And he's not going to be able to search. So that's all good for us. And now he's only got, we draw a monster with a decent amount of attack. We're good. He's going to summon denier, tar take a... Banished Destiny Hero Monster placed on top of the deck. So you can place the Dark Angel back on top of his deck. Oh no, he's going to place that on top of his deck. Mask Change. Probably go into Dark Law. He's going to go to Battle Phase. Uh, our effect still activates even though our monster got banished. Because the only thing that needs to happen is that needs to get destroyed. Dark Law, unfortunately, is going to banish a random card. Yeah, but hopefully it's just not Lightning Storm. Main Phase 2, End Phase... Let's resolve that. I think we add... What can we add that would help? I think Ray is pretty versatile, so I'm going to go ahead and add Ray. Dark Law is going to trigger to banish something. Unfortunately, we have to deal with the Dark Law. Like I said, as long as end, it's the same card we searched. Alright, so that, that happens. That does happen. Nothing we can do there. Uh, we're going to get Dimensional Prison. Uh, we can get rid of his Dark Law because I, I don't have... Actually, I think we just save it again. I think we just set this and hope he attacks us and banish the Dark Claw. I think we just pass. This is no point to give that up right now. Our life points are getting low, but so are his. It's going to go straight to battle phase. That's good. We are playing this very patiently. Banish that. Cool. And now, like I said, we need to draw a monster. This Bestial Magnemite has been kind of useless because we just haven't been able to get to anything. Let's see, Sakuratsu Armor, we just set that and pass. We haven't been able to get into an Exceed Monster if we were. Maybe that's what I should have gone into. I should have gone into an Exceed Monster. Because if I had gone into an Exceed Monster, I would have been able to put the... Yeah, I would. if I had been able to get an Exceed Monster into play, I would have been able to put some Lights and Darks in Graveyard. I could summon Bestial Magnemite and end this game. Unfortunately, I was not able to do that. Alright, let's go for a monster. We've been drawing monsters all day. Okay, good. Ron Ryu is a monster. Half the battle. We're going to normal summon Ron Ryu. And we're going to go to battle phase and just attack directly. Now he's really low. He's down to only 1,200 life points. So we're, we're in decent shape, right? Oh, he could have evenly matched. That's what he could have. In which case, yep, evenly matched. In which case, we banish, unfortunately, Ron Ryu and unfortunately, Sakuratsu Armor. And we just pass on this. Because that's what we've got. Uh... Yeah, that's what we've got. And then we've got Lightning Vortex. Like I said, for the follow-up, we still do have Lightning Vortex. Still can't seem to get anything going. Ledger Book. All day long today, we didn't draw trap cards. and we're, Now it's like Trap City. We're drawing non-stop trap cards now. Polymerization. Oof, this is, this is rough. Polymerization. We're down. It's 1,200 life points. Gonna fuse two monsters to get into something. I'm not happy with those being Destiny Heroes because he can go into the man himself, Destiny Hero Phoenix. I can't I cannot stand this card. It's gonna go for the battle phase. I, I what am I gonna do about that? Not a damn thing. I, there's no point to activate that because he can just chain and I give him life points. Again, no point to activate this. You gotta be kidding me with these cards. I mean the good thing is that. If I activate the Lightning Storm, this doesn't come back. So, I know the second I act, I, I discard the Bestial Magnemite, it's going to like come up immediately where I would need one. Yeah, I'm going to save it just in case he pops. Just in case he activates this and pops Dimensional Fissure. Okay, perfect. Hopefully he pops Dimensional Fissure. Hopefully he pops Dimensional Fissure. Actually, we're going to activate this. Activate this. I think I'm going to try to force him to pop the Dimensional Fissure. If I force him to pop Dimensional Fissure, no, I don't want to... Do another card. Actually, hold. yeah, it's self and another card, right? You can target one other card and it's self. So I'm going to banish this. I'm not going to banish this. And then hopefully, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes. So that'll banish. He's going to pop two cards simultaneously, which I think is going to be the dimensional fissure. 
And that goes to the graveyard. Perfect. 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 All the rulings worked out. You can activate that effect. That's fine because it's going to be game. That is absolutely perfect. That was an amazing play. Uh, now we activate Bestial Magnum. Banish that. I don't know what he's got. Maxi. Okay, whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter. A little late. <laughs> he can finally activate. I just realized he couldn't activate Maxi all game because Dimensional Fissure has been on the board. So he's gonna, we're going to banish that. And now we attack for game. Assuming, you know. Do we activate this? Yeah, why not? What is he going to do? Maxi? I mean, what is he going to do? Uh, Ash? Now we just go for game. That's perfect. We played that out amazingly at the end there. That was great. That was amazing. MLG Pro play at the end. Okay, so we've got one Legacy Ticket to round it out. Alright, so this is what our opponent was playing. They were playing one Dimensional Barrier, one evenly matched, one Solemn Strike. Very odd ratios here, but I mean, it, if it works for him, it works for him, right? Alright, let's open a Master Pack, see what we get. Let's see, hopefully we get something great. We really could use something amazing for this episode. We've got uh, Sunseed, Shadow. I don't think that's going to be usable for us. Um, well, Kinetic Puppeteer is not going to be usable for us. It just moves the card to another monster zone. That really is super usable. I mean, we could technically use this card with, like... I don't know. We could technically use it with, like, Tiamaton. So we can quick effect, move something. But I don't, I don't think that's worth it. Uh, Magic Drain is... It can negate a spell card. Our opponent, if our opponent discards a spell, then they can negate this card. So... I don't know how good that really is. I mean, it's not the worst card. Hedgehog's not, like, the worst card ever, but not really great either. Flint, uh, Kragger's a decent card. We already have a copy of this, but we don't have any of the fusion monsters for fossils. Uh, Battery Man, not really usable. And Curse, not really usable. Let's see what this is. Uh, Ida the Sun Magician. I, I've never even... I don't even know what this does, or... I don't think I've ever heard of this. Uh, this card isn't terrible, but... It's not really great either. <laughs> uh, it summons a spellcaster monster in face down defense position from our deck with 1500 or 1500 defense, which means the familiar possessed flip effect girls, it can summon those. Uh, but I don't know. It's not really too usable. It's only the flip effect ones that are 1500 defense, I believe. So I don't think it's going to be too usable. For us, I mean, it, it technically works with the fairy tales, but we don't have any of those, so I don't think this card's usable at all for us. Uh, but it's not like terrible, it's not really good either, though. Uh, so the only thing may be usable if we have the right stuff, but Magic Drain is somewhat usable. All right, last pack of the episode is a legacy ticket. Let's see what we get. Hopefully, it's something usable. We've got Leeching Light. Uh, yeah, this isn't really too usable. Yeah, it has to be a face-up light monster opponent controls, and we, that, you know, what if we don't play a light deck, and then double cost, double cost, then, which, again, is not too usable, but that's the end of the episode. Uh, we didn't pull too great, but we did win a lot. La, 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 la.